Cutting straight strips freehand can be difficult. You have to aim straight in the beginning and press the saw towards the timber to get an even strip with the same thickness. It can definitely be done, but any adjustment needed. Like lifting the saw over the saw horse, or moving the power cable or dust exhausting, may result in uneven strips. Like this one. Thick here in the beginning, and thin here further in, ending up as frustrating waste. I'm thinking about a saw station, like this, where the saw tracks straight using only one hand, and I can keep the timber in place with the other, so I can get nice even strips, like this. Let's make it. To get a straight track I use some aluminium profiles. I fasten the aluminium level temporarily with screw clamps in both ends. This will work as a mold for the router. With another straight edge I can fence in the router. I set up the edges so that I can have some free movement. I want to accomplish a 1 cm wide track and I check the distance carefully. With necessary adjustments I make the distance 1 cm wider than the router plate. Now milling should be straight forward until I run into problems with the clamps. I have to move one to free up some space. To finish quickly. As a track side for the saw I plan on using a steel frame. This profile is 10 times 10 mm, whereof 5 mm extends above the grove. To get another track side, I make another grove 14 mm away from the first. The width of the circular saw base plate track is 40 mm. To fasten the steel profile, I drill holes for screws. And to not drill through the board by mistake, I move the profile. This will work, and I can cut the profiles to length. Maybe it's time to get a new blade for the saw, but I get through this time. I fasten the profile with uh, short screws. Maybe I will glue the profile in place later, but I will not waste epoxy now if this idea doesn't work. Still, this looks promising to steer the base plate. Now to some more dusty work, best performed on the outside. I cut off the excess board to make a track guide as wide as a saw cuts. I measure out how deep the saw cuts to calculate how much I need to raise a saw track. Fifty millimeter strips are needed to raise a saw. Now I can use a saw guide to cut the needed strips. As you can see, the plywood is crooked, so I need to use clamps to keep it in place. The base plate will keep the timber in place. The two 50 mm high strips, together with the saw track, will raise the saw the 68 mm deep cutting depth. When I'm done with the dusty work, I move inside again. As the board is so unstraight, I need many clamps. I use the aluminium profile to compare with. When I have a dry fit that will work, I can start gluing. After wiping off the excess wood glue, I can put the strip roughly in place.
Exact location requires clamps. And screws for more permanent fit. I need to repeat the process each 10 cm or so, as the plywood is so crooky. If you try to build a similar track, I recommend using better quality plywood. Here I need to use a lot of time, force, glue and screws to reach a mediocre fit. But eventually I get to the end. And it lines up straight enough. The second wall needs to be even straighter. And this U-turning plywood will require a lot of holding force. I start off in a similar way as with the first wall. Using a lot of clamps. Screw clamps are stronger and it's needed. Screws are mounted even tighter, and thus I get the plywood strip. I want to be able to adjust the position of the cutting guide in relation to the timber base plate. Thus I drill holes for bolts. I lower the holes to keep the upside of the wagon bolts flush with the board. In the timber base plate I also make holes exactly below the holes in the track. I extend these holes in an orthogonal direction to the track. Thus I will be able to move the track sideways. I only need a few millimeter adjustment, but you could extend this further. I check that I can make 5 millimeter wide strips. And that the saw blade do not cut too deep into the timber base plate. Although the bottom is straight, I need to stabilize the top. I glue in 50mm wide cross sections to stabilize. And of course I need to apply pressure with different means. Screw clamps are best to straighten things out. Now we can test the saw station. It won't take long. This is the result I want to have. 